Uh, Martin Barstow is Professor of Astrophysics and Space Science at the University of Leicester. Um, Martin, um, just explain first of all how significant this achievement is for China and the international team of uh, moon explorers. Well, th this is a fantastic achievement and it's a, a real testament to how well China is developing its space program. I mean, it's, it's been very active in space for a number of years. But this shows just how much they can do. Nobody else has done this before, and getting samples from the far side of the moon is really hard. It looks extraordinary, and we report on space exploration a lot, and it seems almost ordinary now. But this isn't, is it? I mean, just how challenging and risky was this mission? Absolutely not, because the far side of the moon is always uh, away from us, by definition, I suppose. But, of course, being around the far side makes it very difficult to communicate with any spacecraft. So that one of the challenges of getting samples is, be able, is to be able to relay uh, commands to the lander and get it down safely, and then to communicate it with it once it's down there. So doing all that and then collecting samples and getting off the moon again, which is in itself a challenging thing to do, is tremendous. I guess this is an unfair question, really, because obviously we don't know yet. But uh, what can these gathered samples perhaps tell us about the moon? Well, obviously, we don't know the answers at the moment, so we can only talk about it in a general way. But because we haven't had samples from the far side of the moon before, this gives an opportunity to probe a piece of the moon that looks very different to that that we see from Earth. The side facing the Earth has been recovered uh, many times by volcanic activity. So any samples from the Earth-facing side of the Moon are not necessarily very old compared to those that we might find on the far side. And the, on the far side of the Moon, the terrain is rockier, but it's also much more likely to be material that's been unchanged since the Moon was formed. So that will tell us a lot about the history of the Moon in the end. And might these samples perhaps also tell us um, a wider story about our understanding of space? Well, the, the moon is an important part of the history of the formation of the solar system, so, so yes, it will. We have a basic idea of how the moon was formed uh, by the collision of a large body with the Earth early in its history. So the moon is actually basically a part of the Earth originally. But how that all happened is not so well known. And I think we'll learn a lot more about how the solar system evolved from these samples as well. Sometimes um, on news programmes there doesn't seem to be much collaboration on Earth, but I mean this is truly an extraordinary international collaboration, isn't it? China working with the European Space Agency, the ESA, France uh, and Italy. I mean it, it, it's the most extraordinary global endeavour, isn't it? Space, space is very much collaboration uh, because there's a lot we need to do and we need to get together to work in space. It's quite costly to do these things and so sharing our ideas and our technologies and the costs is quite important to be able to achieve all the things that we want to achieve in space exploration. I mean, I guess, obviously, you're surrounded by students who are fascinated in this, but uh, this surely also has huge value in terms of inspiration for a, a new generation who will be absolutely fascinated by this. Well, it, it certainly does. Uh, and we hope that China will be willing to share its samples more widely once it's had a chance to have a look at them. And, in fact, in Leicester, we're developing a, a sample curation facility for recovering samples from Mars. So if we were able to get some of these samples, bring them into the UK and showcase them to young people in the UK, I think that will be really helpful. Martin, good to talk to you and thanks so much for your time. Martin Barstow, the uh, Professor of Astrophysics and Space Science at the University of Leicester.